Today is my first day in Mazar. And my first day seeing in Afghanistan in which women are not out, um, except in a burqa. The burqas look so strange, and the women are almost kind of ghostly. They don't talk, and they're silent amidst all these men everywhere, merchants' faces. Are there really women under there? My name is Serena Orloff, and I'm a long way from home in California. I've come to northern Afghanistan to help make a film about the lives of women three years after the fall of the Taliban. I will live with Hasina Rasuli and her family in Mazari Sharif. We are both 27, and with Hasina's help, I hope to learn about her culture. <laughs> That's why Hasina is an unusual Afghan woman. She is literate, just finishing medical school, and works to support her family as a journalist. An American colleague once called her the closest thing Afghanistan has to a radical feminist. We can be good friends, I hope. <laughs> so please wear your burqa now. Put it back on. My dad and stepmother are the filmmakers. That's my stepmother Olga, who does most of the filming. Olga has wanted to make a film on Afghan women since her first trip to Afghanistan in 2002. Under the Taliban, it was illegal for women to walk outside without a burqa. Schools for girls were closed and women were not permitted to work. But now the Taliban are gone. So Olga wondered, why do women still wear the burqa? I wanted to thank your father mm -hmm. and your mother for hosting my daughter. Mm -hmm. Hasina says her family is open-minded. Her father has lived outside the country, and it's important to him that the girls in the family all go to school. You know, in Afghan culture, it's really important for, for the girls to keep them secure. Uh -huh. All of this is so different. Uh, we yeah. will talk more about this. And you said he's 18? This is the room I share with Hasina. We are fortunate to have it. All six of her unmarried brothers and sisters sleep in the same room downstairs. Yet the family is wealthy by Afghan standards. Hasina has arranged interviews with Afghan women, but we will also keep video journals of our own impressions.
On our first morning here, we went to see Malalai Usmani, founder of the Women's Defense Association. On International Women's Day, she was hosting a luncheon in Mazar. Malalai is one of Afghanistan's rare women activists, helping women assert their rights granted by the new constitution in 2004. یکی از زنایی که مراجعه کرده بود به دفتر ما او از طریق شوارش همیشه سرش کار شاقه صورت می گرفت و باید خرچ خانه را می کشید تا بلاخره که این مریض می و نمیتونه و شوارش سر از اوره میاشه می تراشه و بعد از او می که اگر باز هم تو کار خرچ خانه را نکشیدی مطره می کشم Her client is a 20 year old woman whose husband and mother-in-law beat her frequently she came to Malalai for help in getting a divorce, and we arranged to interview her in a few days. In the new constitution, men and women have the same equality. In what ways does she think that it's true that there is equality? By constitution, they're equal. Masuda Jalal is Afghanistan's Minister of Women's Affairs. All the negative traditional practices that discriminating women, it is stopped in the new constitution. So now by law, they have no problem, but it doesn't mean that in reality of life they are equal. I was just actually wondering... I wondered why, if women really do have equal rights, most of them still wear the burqa. اما ما هیچ وقت نمیخوایم که مثلا چادری داشته باشم چرا ما مثل مرد یک بشر هستم و ما میخوایم به می شکل که مرا میبینیم به می شکل ما در بین اجتماع داخل شوم و هیچ وقت تو احساس نمیکنم که ما باید چادری بپوشم We went out to the marketplace to buy a burqa. There's only two kinds of burqas. There's blue and there's white, and they all look exactly the same. Some of them, the hot is big. Uh -huh. Some of them is uh, the hot is tight. Uh -huh. So you, you need to just mm, the know, head. yeah, and yeah. to check it that if it's working. Okay. I mean, without the scarf. Yeah. Look at my head. Yes. And then when I. I'm in here, I can see very little, but basically I feel like someone just threw a smock over my head and it, there's not much dignity under here. I feel like I have a sheet over my head. Do you like it? Do I like it? No, no, not that. I mean, you can use it. My dance exercises help me cope. I'm having trouble living by the rules of Afghan culture. Hasina keeps correcting my behavior. Pull up your headscarf. Don't smile too much or talk too loudly or walk too fast in public. It was a surprise for me that uh, Serena said that she's a dancer, uh, but I was not able to explain or translate this to my family because in Afghanistan, in our culture, it's really difficult to have a dancer in a good moral and in a good character in this society. 
So I told uh, her that I will tell to my family that she is mathematics teacher, not dance dancing teacher. به خاطر اینکه قرض است ما مجبور هستیم عبادت کنیم مسلمان هستیم پای وقت نماز می خوانیم تا بوی برش دیگه که نماز بخونی خدا رو یاد کنی مشکلی در رفع میشه هر مشکلی که داشته باشی ان شاء الله که دمت میگی او هم میتونیم به مدرسه یک مورد ثوابش برسه What kind of problems does she have But she tried to say that <laughs> she met her fancy and she want to get married soon She's shy. She will not do this. So this is your engaged, your yes. fiance. How did you meet? Darsi khor mulaqat kardi. Tu rafta ke khane shan o khane. Ah, rasi boi bura. Ah, ma khane shan rafta bura. Ah, dinam shan. Amre padar madar. Amre padar madar mimoni. Bada zure dinam shan. Bas darsi rita idit ke dia. Mulaqat kardi. So we see in the pictures that you know he picked her up. And he's holding her like this. Is that ordinarily allowed before marriage? Uh, no. Normally, an engaged Afghan couple cannot spend time with each other before the marriage ritual, known as banika. That's when the mullah sanctions the beginning of sexual contact. But Farishta is from a progressive family. Her parents allow her and her fiancé to spend time alone together. She is marrying by choice, so I was surprised that her fiancé expects her to wear a burqa. He called her and said that two nights continuously I dreamed that you went outside without burqa. Look, it's warning for you. If you go without burqa and I heard it, I will stop it with you. And she said, no, 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 I don't go without work. If I do not left the house, I'm at home and you just you worry about it. I said, oh my God. <laughs> if someone come and say me, Hasira, where are you? Why you are you going without work? Why you are receiving this much calls? Who is the one that you are talking to? Why are you are laughing? I will die. <laughs> Hasina has given up on marriage. Working is too important to her, and she doesn't think she will ever find an Afghan man who would allow it. How a man, an Afghan man in this country, outside maybe it's possible, but in this country, I'm sure, I'm sure that it's not possible. So cancel, no money, no baby, no love, no life. <laughs> Only freedom, I love my freedom. Hasina and Farishta are clearly cut from different cloth. I can't believe that Farishta is so excited to marry a man who forces her to wear a burqa. I know we do a lot of things for love, first of all. But it seems like for love, she's going to be giving up her freedom. <laughs> She, loved, she said that I loved my freedom and I really suffer while, I, while I'm thinking that I will lose my freedom. But doesn't she worry that he's not an open-minded man and from now on, as soon as she gets married, she is under the control of him? Yeah. <laughs> Hasina worked for Doctors Without Borders, earning $1,000 a month. That's an enormous salary, even for an Afghan man. Because of her financial support, she enjoyed honorary male status within her family. But her independence comes at a price. In Afghan culture, a woman defines herself through marriage and bearing children. If she doesn't marry, she'll have no choice but to live with her family, and society will look down upon her as a failure. Hasina may already have hit that point. Let's go to
Watching guests arrive at this wedding hall, I wondered how a young bride feels about starting life with a husband and his extended family, where she cannot even leave the house without permission. Hasina suggested we visit her friend's beauty parlor, where girls go on their wedding day. That's the bride drying her hair. It was clear that the camera made her nervous. Why is she afraid to allow to video? Uh, us, uh, she is she afraid because uh, uh, the groom F, he knows that the bride uh, heard that it's filming through the camera, then she will be in trouble. Outside the beauty parlor, standing in the hot sun, was a friend of the groom who was waiting to escort his sister to the wedding party. Can you tell us a little bit about the actual marriage ceremony that occurred this morning? Actually, two kind of uh, uh, party. One is, one is male party, another is women, uh, women party. The main party is to just uh, to hold the wedding the groom comes and uh, the mullah is over there and the mullah recites some verses from the Holy Quran which makes the sexual contact legal and the groom is saying that yes I accept that bride I agreed on that and the mullah asked him three times did you accept that yes I accept did you accept that yes I accept something like that can I ask a question? Sure. Does the mullah also ask the woman if she accepts? Actually, three delegates from bride sides are coming to that to that morning, and they are saying, uh, the mullah asked them, "Where did you come from? I come from the bride. What did she say? She said I agreed. I can. I agreed to marry that guy." So the. The bride is not even at the wedding ceremony. No, no. no. Ah. The, the bride ceremony, uh, actually, the bride uh, uh, ceremony is in the afternoon, which is now. Uh -huh. What he called the bride's ceremony was really just a party. Only men attend the actual marriage ceremony with the mullah. I was beginning to understand that marriage was not a union between a man and a woman but a contract between the men of two households. We've been having a very difficult time. We wanted to film inside the women's party, but the male family members and the groom did not allow us to. Yeah, that's true. Because our religious does not accept. We are, we, we are Muslim. We just follow Islam, Islam rules. Can you tell me what Islam says specifically that makes it against the rules? You have outside films of the wedding. What exactly does your religion say about that? Uh, uh, I don't have enough information about that. A very small minority of Afghans have ever read the Quran in our languages. Nasreen Gross teaches at Kabul University. As you know, the Quran is written in Arabic, and our languages are Dari, Pashto, Uzbek, Pashe, these things. So very few people actually know what God has said. Islam says, keep you were women uh, very sacred because the women are sacred. Actually filming and uh, taking photos is illegal and Islam rule. Islam says do according to the Holy Quran, do whatever Quran says. Yes. My name is Gulsum. My name is Fatima. You girls are beautiful today. No, beautiful thank clothes. You, thank you. Can I see the clothes you're wearing? Could you show me? Yes. Show me what you're wearing. No, no. Why is he saying no? What? 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 Even young boys like these learn they have a responsibility to watch over the women. Okay. 
The next day, we went back to Malalai Usmani's Women's Defense Center to meet her client, Zahira, who arrived with her mother. Both brought their young children. Zahira's story was worse than we thought. Her husband bring the other man uh, to have sex with his wife. So she said that this is an Afghan and Muslim girl and woman. So it was really difficult for her while her mother heard about this, that uh, her son-in-law bring other men to her daughter. So even... Because he was not a good man, not for the good family. For money. Malalai helped Zahira get a divorce by bringing her case to the local elders. Those are the divorce papers signed with thumbprints. Like 90% of Afghan women, Zahira is illiterate. <laughs> All <laughs> She said that I feel so happy that I received divorce because I feel that I, uh, I was, I felt before that I was in the prison, and now I'm free from the prison. So she said that she's happy. Under Islam, getting a divorce is much easier for men. A man can divorce his wife just by saying talaq, meaning I divorce you, three times. But a woman must go through a lengthy process appealing to her family and the local mullah, and children routinely belong to the father after a divorce. I don't blame you at all, but don't you wish that you could get married and marriage would mean something else where you could have a nice, you know, relationship with a man and a partner and someone to have children with, but that it wouldn't come packaged with all of this other stuff, like you're um, under control of someone else. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, see, uh, this is also my wish. I'm not so young. I have the age to get married, to have, I love to have a baby. I love to have uh, my own family. I thought it was sad that Hasina had to choose between independence and a family of her own. I was surprised to find out that there had been one suitor in her past that Hasina really wanted to marry. He was from Kabul, educated and open-minded. She thought he would respect her need for independence and permit her to work. But her mother didn't allow the marriage. Mom said that, oh, no, it's not possible. I said, why? Mom said that uh, in Kabul, they are living in Kabul. In Kabul, they are not paying money for the girl. Uh, because they are more modern and uh, they will not hold uh, such a big party. Then I said, no, mom, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. I discussed with him and we agreed. Mm -hmm. We agreed to get married and, and that's all. Suddenly mom find hypertension, has blood pressure gone high mm -hmm. and she was just uh, complaining. So we bring her to doctor, then I was really shocked. That if something happened on mom, I'm the cause because I reject her mm -hmm. advice. Wow, I, I've never felt that I can be this much in love. I was just crying for three days. Mm -hmm. I cannot mm -hmm. stop my... 
Mm. <laughs> That's really hard. Mm. <laughs> so I bought this burqa at the market the other day. And I'm going to try putting it on by myself, which I actually haven't really done yet because Hasina helped me when I was trying them on at the market. And then we're going to go shopping <laughs> with our burkas. <laughs> yeah, this is burqa that I used for the first time when the Taliban came in. So um, I know how to use it, how to wear it. It's, it's fine. <laughs> 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 Is yours on already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, that's better. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna get hit by a car. <laughs> okay, this way. Hasina, I can't see anything. <laughs> I mean, I no, I mean, I can see, but I can't see. Like I couldn't buy a. <laughs> I feel like I need to like get really close to see. Yes, now I can see, but. So we need to get pepper. What pepper? Oh no, black pepper. We cannot find here, we, we are going to other part of market. under this burqa. I'm getting a headache from this burqa. It's like I'm really car sick or something. When you look through and you try to focus on what's in front of you and then there's this shifting thing, it, it gives you a headache. It, it's making me grumpy. Would you be able to buy some well, I can do it, but let's do it because it's. It, I feel like I'm just wandering, and I'm feeling hot and headachey and and lightheaded, and it it's difficult. It's hard work under here. It's not fun. All right, let's just get some apples and then head out. Okay. Maybe some tangerines. I had looked forward to our shopping today because it was a chance to be outside. Just choose it. Okay. You can't tell that's too mushy. But shopping in the burqa wasn't pleasant at all. You have money? You pay? Finally, I completely lost it. <laughs> I'm really upset.
I've come to think that men here consider every woman a potential whore. Ironically, the burqa only seems to make this worse. It creates sexual tension. Even I wonder, what kind of woman is under that burqa? The sisters always congregate around the television watching Bollywood. I thought it was a little strange they spent hours every day watching it and trying to emulate the Indian actresses. But it turned out that although their culture forbids them to have boyfriends, they are quite intrigued with romance. Yeah, first I need to hide it. Uh -huh. If I love someone, if I, I meet him and I have some die, I need to hide it as much as I can. Dad and mom says, if you want to have friends, if you want to uh, be free to do what you want, please do, do for us in a favor, put a little bit poison in the food and bring to mom and dad. While we both eat it and we will die and then we will be uh, free to do this. Issues. If we heart that Were you they serious? Yeah, they yeah, serious. Yeah. Then you see that uh, if they heard that I have such a kind of relation, because it's, I have lots of possibility when I'm working, if I have such a uh, relation with someone, they immediately, they will not kill me. Mm -hmm. We will not kill you, but we will do something that you will suffer more than killing. You know what he says that I will just find someone without any wedding, without any preparation. I will just marry you with this man. And after that, I will tell to the man that I could not control this girl. I cannot keep her. Now it's up to you that how you will keep her. So, a woman shames her entire family by taking a boyfriend before marriage, even if there is no sex involved. Traditionally, the only way to right this wrong is for the women's family to kill her in order to reinstate the family's honor. Honor killing is still quite common despite being outlawed by the new constitution. Now, your parents treat you a little bit different than they treat your sisters. I've noticed that. And what if she were to have a boyfriend and have relations before marriage, would they kill her? Oui. <laughs> she says, <"Whoa>, oh, <laughs> even she afraid from the cause. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yes, she feels that she's that she's that she's that all joking aside, seriously, she thinks that he would kill her? She feels seriously. Hassan, who owns this shop, is an Afghan man who lived for 20 years in the U.S. and still has two children and an ex-wife living there. He had an interesting perspective, reminding us that Afghan men are also restricted. We said there's less freedom for the women here, and you yeah, said course. less freedom for everybody. For everybody, of course. What do you mean men don't have freedom here? So what, what don't they have the freedom to do? You see, the culture is different. Men don't have the freedom of... Oh boy, dancing, for example. Men don't have the freedom of speech. Okay. You cannot talk with a girl if you like, if you like, or if you don't like the girl. Uh -huh. No, what, when, uh, what a man wants. A wife, a house, kids. The same thing as a woman. The woman have a future too. They're supposed to have a husband. But you cannot pick a girl, you know, the one you like. You cannot talk to her. Or a girl cannot talk with a boy, you know, the one uh, like. So that's the freedom we thought was talking about before. Do you think gossip is like a weapon here? It's some well, kind of leverage? Gossip is worse than a weapon. Gossip destroys you down here. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Just like a gun. <laughs> because there's no freedom. <laughs>
Hi. 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 Hassan told us that gossip can destroy lives here. Maybe that's why Hasina's younger brother Samim feels responsible for protecting his family's reputation. How is he responsible for your honor? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. If he could, he does. He would not allow you to go to school. Why is that? They don't have an institutional or historical memory of the 20th century in Afghanistan. Forty years ago, when I was an 18-year-old, women worked in all spheres of life. They were stewardesses, they were judges, they were teachers, they were professors. Unfortunately, that memory of Afghan women being so much, so active in society has been uh, erased by 25 years of war. If he saw an Afghan woman walking without wearing a burqa, does he think she's a bad woman? Does he think you're a bad woman because you walk around without the burqa? Nice question, thank you. He says that I'm not saying that you are a bad girl. What if wearing the burqa makes you unhappy? he says that if you are an Afghan, a Muslim girl, you, you may not be happy without Muslim. He says that this, this is written on the Quran that the Afghan Muslim woman will not show her face to the a strange man, the man that he doesn't know. That is, it's not Maham. Can he show me that in the Quran? Huh? On Wednesday mornings from 9 to 11, the Shrine of Ali is off limits to men to allow the women to visit uncovered. Despite what Samim said, these women seemed happy. Only about 20% of the Afghan people live in cities like Mazar or Kabul. The rest live in towns and villages in the countryside where life hasn't changed much for generations.
In the town of Sholgara, we asked the police chief about the rights of women guaranteed by the new Afghan constitution. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us again. Police Chief Akbari told us that in his district, wife beating and forced marriages are now illegal. Young girls are still sold into marriage, but this too is against the law. He told us a recent case, a child bride named Zainab who is trying to divorce her 70-year-old husband. He agreed to take us to her house to ask the family for an interview. Under the Taliban, Zainab's family wanted to flee Afghanistan, but they were too poor to afford the smuggler's fee for transportation to Iran. They sold Zainab into marriage in exchange for several thousand dollars to pay the smugglers. According to her, his name was Gulhan and he was 70 years old. Zainab was seven years old when the engagement took place. But Ghul Khan agreed to wait until she was a little older before marrying her. Bright money, we call it. Uh, this has been a tradition in Afghanistan. It was not extremely serious, and it has become as a result of war and as a result of the unimaginable poverty of Afghans. They had no other commodity to trade. What is the called? I <laughs> Yeah. Zainab told us that her husband demanded that she repay the bride money, money her family had already given to the smugglers. If Zainab wanted her divorce, she had to buy herself back from her husband, a situation complicated by the fact that 13-year-old Zainab is now damaged goods. She'd never again fetch the same price as a virgin. On our way back to Mazar, we passed this wedding party. I couldn't help but wonder how the bride was feeling. We went to the police headquarters in Mazar to interview women in prison. This poster of a child bride crying is part of the government's program to discourage forcing young girls into marriage. At the women's prison, we met a woman, jailed for running away with the man she wanted to marry. <laughs> Yeah, they beat me even in my head that it was open, yeah, that we need to accept. Kizatra. <laughs> and was he sent to jail for beating her? No, no, they do not put them in the jail, only me. They shouldn't be in the prison. They should be in shelter. 
but we don't have shelter. So that's why they are in the prison. There is no other place for them to be. How is life here in prison? Shireen Gol has received no legal advice and has no idea how long she'll wait for her case to go to court. But she's lucky. She was brought to prison before her family had the chance to kill her. Someday she hopes to marry the man of her choice. Hi, how are you? Oh, Maludin. Hi, how are you? Hi. Thank you. Muludin is married to Hasina's sister, Rita. During the wedding negotiations, he promised Rita's father she could finish law school and work. But when they got engaged, he changed his mind, forcing her to drop out of school and stay at home. When she goes out, she always has to wear a burqa. I was surprised to see that Rita wears the burqa. Yes? Rita, yeah. Yeah. But um, Hasina doesn't wear the burqa. Does Rita wear the burqa by choice? Is it her own choice to wear the burqa? Uh, before <laughs> Taliban, he, she also didn't use the burqa. After Taliban, she started to use the burqa because the situation changed. So yeah. you're saying that Rita wears the burqa by her own choice? <laughs> yes. I want to, <coughs> Rita or my wife should use burqa. Why? Because I told you before the people are illiterate. They are telling me or making me, bothering me. Oh, your wife is bare face. My relatives, my friends, the people who are living in the same street with me. Like Hassan is going bare face to the street, the other boys and I him. Oh, your sister, I saw your sister bare face walking on the street. Or your sister is working with, uh, in the offices. Your friend making jokes, making fun with him. Maybe uh, she, he will be. It is annoying to him. Like the people say says to me, your wife is going or your sister, your mother is bare face. I saw. This is really embarrassing for Afghan people. And here I was, well, my sister was engaged, mom was uh, very young. Yeah. Um, but after the In these pictures from the 1970s, I saw an Afghanistan that looked more progressive. While life hadn't changed much in the countryside, urban women, particularly in Kabul, were beginning to enjoy more freedoms. I had always thought of modernization as a one-way process, but it was interesting to see that it had reversed course. During communist era in Afghanistan, uh, um, there were lots of nightclubs. The government encouraged women to wear mini skirts, go into nightclubs, drink in nightclubs, associate freely with men. Um, and unfortunately, what Afghans remember is that experience. The more the communists gave sexual freedom to women, or these other freedoms, you know, of expression, the more they thought they should be uh, restrictive in Islam. And what we need to do now is to show no human, women's rights, women's dignity, Afghanistan's progress is not based on, on the communist approach to sexual freedom, but rather on human dignity. I thought back to all of the women I had met and realized that most of them seemed resigned to their situation. Yeah, she said that because of the dads and the husbands' uh, reputation, we could not do this much or to, to have our right. It's funny. You, you, the men won't give the women the permission to fight for their rights. 
Yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, she said that uh, we want to have our rights, but we j just because of caring of the dad or husband's reputation in the society, uh, and also the, the fear that they have from the men, I mean, they're afraid. So we, we could not do this. I feel that it's not easy that the women and men have equal rights and parity soon. Because now in, in our small boys, they're injected in their minds that we need to keep our uh, mothers and sisters safe at home. Around 90% of the men in Afghanistan in this culture, they are doing like this. They do not want, actually they, they say that what they want, what they are saying, they, ha they have their wives under their controls, so they want to guide their wives as a child. To this, don't do this. So I think that uh, a little bit I'm hopeless. Really, there's no way I can understand really understand the situation of the women in Afghanistan. I can look, I can in some ways relate, in some ways empathize, but it's, it's going to have to be a fight that the women in Afghanistan figure out for themselves and in a way that feels right for them. What I'm doing, I'm sure from my point of view, it's right. I want to do not use burqa, I want to work. Besides that, I want to have education. I have a smiley face, I'm always laughing. It's, it's my habit that I cannot change it. So it's difficult for me to be like other girls. It's three years that we want to bring a fundamental radical change. Empower women and make a government and a civil society uh, sharing the decision-making power in all walks of life. The new Afghanistan is like a three years baby. And the three years child, if it's left by its own, uh, the life will be very risky for her. So until this child is getting grown up and is becoming empowered of being able to protect itself, we need to take care of this uh, little child. Seeing the situation of Afghan women had affected me more deeply than I had anticipated, and I was relieved to be coming home. But I wondered, what would happen to Farishta? Would her marriage turn out well? How would Samim treat his future wife? And finally, what would happen to Hasina, who seems to have slipped between the cracks of her own culture? Where does she fit in a society where tension is growing every day between the traditional rules of the culture and the growing influence of the outside world? I feel a sadness for the Afghan women who have died and who will die fighting for their rights. I hope Hasina is not one of them.
करबी दिली 